did you want to get on to the yeah, the negatives? The negatives. negatives. The negatives. You want to go first? Okay. Let's let us list the negatives that we took away from the Libertarian Party. Our impressions uh, at the convention. Okay. I will list it in three simple categories. Number one, they are very naive. I would say, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't necessarily say very naive, but kind of naive. They're naive. So, somewhere in between kind of and very. Yes. So you've got <laughs> these well-educated people. Yes. A, a vast variety of levels of education. Yes. But you're saying naive. They're naive. I, I, because they, I don't think they really truly understand the the beast that they're up against. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, I would, okay. They're, would, all, they're almost like kind of... Innocent like children, yes. In a way, they just don't really understand how how big the beast is that yes. they're fighting. I would, I would, I would character, uh, I would make it into this caricature. It's it's a person with a a, a lantern, and they're in a, a really dark cave. Now they're completely illuminated around themselves because it's the Constitution <laughs> that is lighting their way. Okay. No, the Constitution is not on fire. The Constitution is illuminating. Okay, got <laughs> anyway, it. <laughs> anyway, the Constitution is thinking this. It's just it's, it's burning. A, it's a holy object, the Constitution, and so it's um, it's illuminating their way, but they can only see immediately around themselves. Gotcha. And they're thinking to themselves, "I've got this," as they're walking deeper into the darkness. Meanwhile, and they've got all these eyes in the darkness watching them. These hungry eyes watching yeah. them. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, us three, we've got night vision binoculars, and, 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 and we're that. seeing all these goblins and stuff in the darkness that are just watching us, ready to pounce on well, us or something. And yeah. up above them is this huge hydra that's <laughs> ready to eat them. And they're like, "Yeah, hell hydra!" <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. That's so that that's that's that's, <laughs> that's what I would. Uh, t- uh, characterize it as okay. Like they've got the they've got the values, they've got the, the initiatives, they've got the the concepts, but they're very naive. Kind of like a bright eyed young child. Yes. Like, so they don't realize just how embedded the deep state is, and yeah. the fact that that government over there, the general government's completely lost. Yes. They don't understand. I mean, they're like, for instance, the guy who talked to us about the Weimar Republic. Now, he understood that. Mm. And the other very educated person, I believe he originated from New York. Uh, but anyway, Yeah, yeah that, that older guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very, very educated. In fact, he's per, he, he specifically spoke to us about Alex Jones. And so... Um, he he was, actually liked Alex Jones, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, yeah he, 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 okay. he was yeah. full, you know, full stop. He was like... Yeah. And, uh, it, like, they completely understood... So he's awake. Yeah. Yes. You have your uh, awake spectrum of people, but it's they're probably in the minority. Yes. 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 They were in the minority of the people that we encountered. They're, they're some of the more hardened libertarians, I yes. guess. The, yes. The, the more top dog mm-hmm. sort of libertarian, okay. yeah. I guess. And then you got all these other ones that are they're more like, they're just kind of, they, they, they may have been libertarians for a long time, but it still seems like they're just kind of poking their noses into the door or something. Yeah, they're like, like they're, yay! Okay. Yeah, they're like cheerleaders almost. Yeah, yeah <laughs> basically. So with, with this one negative here, I just want to ask, do you feel like the, the these top dogs, the ones that are, are awake, mm-hmm. do you, are they trying to educate the other libertarians at all? Because um, they must know that they're naive. Well, I think based on the way they talk to us, yes, it seems like I think I think given the chance they would, yes, I, I, th- I, th- I think it might be kind of hard to do that. They they probably run into run into challenges along the way because they got to deal with all the like like we talked about the parliamentary pr- mm-hmm. procedure mm-hmm. and how they actually do things in their party. There might be some practical challenges that they face along yeah. the way, but I think given the chance they would, yeah. But you see, they're no. I would equate them to us. They're no different from us. You know, we tiptoe around talking to people about Alex Jones and, you know, stuff like that. We don't yeah. just punch them in the face. We with, try not to, anyway. Yeah, we try not to, but, <laughs> you know, we, we try and be respectful and, and you know, we try and we try and get at the subjects that they can I- identify with first. And I'm pretty sure they run into the same exact thing. Because, you know, if you, if you try to bombard people with too much information all at once, it's like they just automatically run away. Right. Yeah. Kind of, it, it makes me think of that scene yep. from, the, from the Matrix. Spoiler, spoiler alert spoiler if no one's alert. ever seen it. But it's like, it's like the, 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 the head guy talks to, is it Nero? Oh, you mean yeah. uh, um, um, Morpheus talks to Neo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, 
he, he tells him, like, he shows him all this information, and the guy gets sick. He almost dies. And he's mm-hmm. like, hey, later on, he's like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry I, I laid that all down on you all at once. I shouldn't have done yeah. it like that. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's the thing. you got to be careful giving people too much information. It's going to turn them the other way. It's going to freak them out, and then they're yeah. not going to want to ever look at it. Right. A, mm-hmm. Ever again, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So, so they probably run into that same kind of stuff as we do. Yep, exactly. Okay. Like I said, they're the same as us. Yeah. Well, that could be true for the Republican Party, too. Oh, absolutely. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Okay, so the first negative was that the party, by and large, was naive. Despite there being very well-educated people within it, the majority of them were naive. The second, the second negative out of the three is that these people, most of the naive ones, are biased. Yeah, I would say very unwilling to work with other parties. Yes. Very, very... Opinionated, uh, uppity, almost very uppity. When, yes. it, when it when it comes to like people expressing any opinion that might be a little bit different than yes. than the than the libertarian objective, dude. You know, yeah. it's like our way. We know what's best. You just sit there and shut up. Yeah, you Ooh. know that that yeah. kind of yeah. Thing. That's exactly what it is. And this is what when we sat down in the convention in this in this room, there was only maybe about thirty people there tops. Um, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, we were the only two outsiders there. That's what it seemed like, anyway. I'd there were a lot of first-time libertarians there, um, as, because they they spoke to that uh, when they got up to speak. But we were the only two actual outsiders. They were not actually officially libertarians. Yes, you know, I, yeah. I, I think, I think and, something along those lines, anyway. And thus, it made it feel like it was more like a country club to me. <laughs> that's what it felt like. And okay. That's what it felt like. Now you can make all your you can make all your jokes about all the greedy money grubbing rhinos in the Republican Party because they're exactly the same way. And uh, and uh, I'm probably you know I, I use that analogy mostly as a joke because it, it yeah. literally felt like we were in a country club <laughs> because we were at the oh. hotel. Uh, yeah. Okay. But but that I couldn't escape th- that that thought would not leave my mind while we were there. And so I just, they, and, uh, but the, the one thing that they were very, very biased on as well, uh, uh, what you said perfectly summed up their attitude. But um, the other thing that they were very biased on is Trump yeah. and Trump supporters. They do not like Trump one bit. No. And yeah. they do not like Trump supporters for Ooh. some reason. So did they yeah. find out that you were actually a Trump supporter? No, we we kept that undercover pretty we well. We were I mean, very th- undercover. Th- that's what's funny. I, I am actually a Trump supporter, but I did vote for Joe Jorgensen. Mm-hmm. So you because, are a paradox. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I, I wonder what they how they'd feel about like I, if I actually was to tell them, hey, I voted for Joe Jorgensen, but I I do support Trump too. Would they just would their heads explode or yes. something? Well, or? first they'd be like, yeah, and then he's like, but I'm a Trump supporter. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to, but you know that's exactly <laughs> what they need to hear. Yeah, because you need to be able to. Uh, not be so biased and self-centered that, you know, your candidate is the candidate a, candidate, and I'm not going to see the good in Someone this other else. person yeah. because he, yeah. he's a Republican or he he speaks his mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the bottom line is we're, it's, we're supposed to be a country of individuals. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not supposed to be focused on parties. Yeah, it's supposed a to be, rigid party. Let's, let's listen to what everyone has to say, not just those people within our party. Mm-hmm. And so that now. includes President Trump. Yes, exactly. So in many ways, the Republican Party, the people that are naive in the Republican Party are just the same as the ones that are naive and biased in the Libertarian Party. Yeah, exactly. And yes. that, that's one of the biggest problems uh, because that, that bias that they have, one guy in particular set my red flags off um, because he was, he was basically putting down all the people in like Western Kansas who fly their Trump flags, mm-hmm. you know, Trump 2024 flags. And, you know, he was he was ba- basically sounding as if he was speaking with disdain for them. And that, the guy you're talking about, he was a Marine, too. He was a Marine. He? Yeah. Yeah, and like, but, and so what, he's missing the bigger picture. Those, all of those people out there, all of those red Republicans... The only reason they're Republicans is because the Republican Party is the only legitimate chance that we have for getting a candidate in. Like, imagine, imagine what would happen if the Libertarian Party came together with the Republican Party and and started working together. Together, yeah, yeah. Because this is the thing: those Trump supporters, this guy was kind of 
being disrespectful to in the way he was phrasing things, those are libertarians too. Yeah, yeah if that's you, true. If you yeah. would reach out to them, you would grow your base. But exactly. you are you are discriminating it's, against it's, them. It's, it's the classic thing of letting labels divide us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and so you know, the, and yeah. he used the phrase. Somebody somewhere used the phrase that they were uh, brainwashed. Yeah, or Trump. Yeah, Tr- Trump supporters were brainwashed, brainwashed and th- and it's <laughs> like a Trump tr- Trump worshippers or yeah, something. Yeah, Trump worshippers, <laughs> a Trump cult or something. Yeah, well, it's something like that. Yeah. Something, something along those lines. Like now, I, I I like Trump because he was like a sledgehammer, but I'm yes. not going to worship the man. <laughs> right. No, of course not. Uh, and the majority of Trump supporters don't. Thankfully, yeah. And uh, it, look, look. At least there are not as many Trump worshippers as there are Biden worshippers. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a whole different <laughs> psychological disorder. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. I said that on camera. I'm sticking with it, though. But so what it's I'm saying, disorder. even even the so-called Trump worshipers, you know, they are still libertarian. And you see, the whole thing is that we all agree we want less government. We want we want more liberty. And if if the Libertarian Party would just stop being so caught up on the whole Trump label, they could reach out to these people who are so-called red and, and turn them to the Libertarian Party just by uh, telling them, like, this is all the common ground that we share. Mm-hmm. But they're putting up this wall. Ooh, they built a wall. They're <laughs> orange man bad. Um, <laughs> but they put up this wall saying, I am immediately opposed to you because you are a Trump supporter. You're brainwashed by Trump. And everyone does that, too. Yeah. So that's, that's, not, that's not specifically a problem with the Libertarian Party. Everyone does yeah. that. It's like it's you... you See that that label, Excuse me. those labels, and it, it, it immediately divides, and, and it, yeah. it creates this unwillingness to talk to anyone just because of that label. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's a, that's a shame. If if there's one big negative in all this, it's the it's the ability for tribes to divide our common ground. And the, the word you mentioned, the L word, liberty is a common ground between the Republican yeah. Party and the Libertarian Party. And it's, and it's funny that you use the word tribes, yeah. because that that's, it does seem tribal. It's tribal. We, we, we got all this... Tri- yeah, that's, that's basically what political parties are at this point. It's like all these different tribes, just like Native American tribes all fighting with each other when we could band together to fight the white man. Yep. Yeah. You know, the, the white man being the... White being supremacy! The, the white man being the, the big government. Yes. You know, the, yeah. the big the big crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if uh if there was a way to combine the two, I agree with you that, yeah. that you you would have a an amazing uh group of people. Mm-hmm. Uh but I'll I'll tell you the conservatives need need to get over the drug issue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cuz oh, they right. they've been uh they you know marijuana I'm going to speak only of marijuana because right. I I see a danger in the hard drugs. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. uh but I don't think anybody should go to jail for taking hard drugs mm-hmm. or being addicted ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh they just need to to help. link up with the church or something and and find a way to help. We need to work on our mental institutions. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not a, don't absolutely. don't be incarcerating and ruining lives. That just makes yeah. it worse. Mm-hmm. But absolutely, uh, you know, just the marijuana issue. Mm-hmm. A lot of conservatives have have locked into that. You know, you're evil if you're smoking pot. Yeah. You know, they you're believe, a druggie. And they believe it, all the propaganda about it. Should it. be yeah. The, and, I, and, I, and I think it's because marijuana is so. It's it's like it's like the the psychology of it is so tied in with the the image of liberal the the liberal view or whatever. Well, it was de- it was just demonized. Yeah, demonized. And, 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 yeah, and there was a an issue there with petroleum and uh, trying to because you can make a lot of things out of hemp out of these plants. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah. that's why we need legalized. Yeah, Petro- the pro- petroleum industry. I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, didn't want the competition, mm-hmm. and I think it uh, began. A process of, of demonizing that uh, mm-hmm. particular plant. Yep. If President Trump and Governor Ron DeSantis ran on a ticket as libertarians in the 2024 election, you would have at least 80 million Americans register as libertarian overnight. Yeah, I bet. That I- is true. Now, I don't want DeSantis to leave Florida. Then and being I, the, a governor is really important. Yeah, yeah. that is important, <laughs> and, and we shouldn't lose Governor Ron. DeSantis. What if what if he came? What if he moved to Kansas? Then would would you be okay with losing? <laughs> yes, leaving Florida. Yes. 
Please. <laughs> Please, uh, Ron, we need you. No, I, I, we need a replacement. And, but yeah, uh, yeah, governors are extremely important. And I hate everybody, everybody wants to promote a great governor of a state, which is a country. Right, right. That, that's just the general government. Why would you want to demote a good governor and put mm. them in the general true. government? Yeah. True. Uh, they really just need to be a good business person and yeah. and know their foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. uh, that that should be their requirement, right. and put that person oh, in there. Okay, so here the new ticket: President Trump and General Flynn. Yeah, I mean, I I, <laughs> I would be happy with that, or or put Joe. Uh, yeah. put a libertarian. Yeah, Joe Jorgensen. There you go. What, what if Donald Trump? Donald Trump and ran, Joe Jorgensen ran with Joe Jorgensen. Make make Joe Jorgensen the primary. President just to make the Libertarian Party happy. <laughs> there you go. And then Donald Trump as vice president. As vice president. Uh, I don't think that would work. Uh, you don't, you don't we're think talking it? Trump here. I mean, he's got to be on top, man. He's the CEO. <laughs> well, I mean, can I you don't... imagine him lowering himself to a, a you know, just the, the the chair of the Senate? Because that's what the vice president is. Didn't he? Didn't didn't Donald <laughs> did, didn't Donald Trump make some comment about actually doing that? Like running for a different position, yes, other yeah, than president, something, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I can see... I, mean, <laughs> I get what I'm, you mean, I'm though. I'm kidding. But, yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, uh, either would work. If it was Trump, Jorgensen, or Jorgensen, Trump, just imagine the powerhouse. Oh, yeah. And, and, the, and the, it would make the, all the rhinos quake in fear, and you would have such a huge turnover from Republican to Libertarian just overnight. Throw Candace Owens into the mix, yeah, too, there Candace somewhere. Yeah, Owens. She does so much good where she is, though. I hate to, yeah. you know, True. stifle her. But, but who cares? Trump did it. Right. He yeah. said what he said. What he felt. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> so I'm good. let her do it. <laughs> but, so, but yeah, my point is, is that you would the Libertarian Party would uh, overnight become the most powerful party, easily, because we know all the election results are fraudulent. Biden did not get over 80 million votes. President Trump most likely got close to that number, if not exceeding <laughs> yeah, 80 million. Yeah, I think it was million. just turned upside down, basically. Yeah. And so just imagine if the Libertarian Party got all those supporters. Because, like I said, Trump supporters, you know, your everyday Republican who, you know, aren't the rhinos up in the ivory towers, you know, they're all Libertarian in values. Mm -hmm. And you see, and the... The, the libertarians need to get over their biases and accept that all Americans are libertarians in their core values unless they are specifically something else. Unless they're leftist. Unless, un unless they're, they are specifically communist, socialist, Marxist, or, you know, Marxist whatever you want to yeah. call them. Um, well, uh, is there anything that we've left out here on the negative side? Yes. Is there, okay. The third one is they are very self-defeating. The libertarian party is very self-defeating. And can you elaborate yes. on that? Yes. They, um, at, on the entire convention that we were present for, um, the topic of being censored was only brought up twice. One by the lawyer, I think, who got up to speak, and he he's not he wasn't necessarily uh, specifically involved with the Libertarian Party. He wanted he was he runs this law firm here in Kansas, and he wanted to speak at the Libertarian convention. As far as I know, um, he was one of the ones we gave a hard copy to. Um, he mentioned it once, and then when uh, they were taking questions at the end, and I happened to ask a question, um, uh, I asked them if they were if these people who were up speaking had Gab accounts or MeWe accounts or Parlor accounts to diversify and reach out to more people, and uh, they said no. We've got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and so and so then one of the other audience members piped up and. You know, because they were kind of poo-pooing the idea of getting these other social media <laughs> accounts. Wow. And, and so somebody else, and they're like, why? And so then one of the other audience members piped up, and, and I think it was probably one of the people who we spoke to. Yeah, if somebody, it was someone who said, well, you, you won't get censored Cens that way. Yeah, you won't get censored that yeah. way. So, so they're definitely aware of like the censorship and all that, but it seems like, but again, I think that kind of falls into naivete. Yeah, because, because because they just don't seem to realize that a lot of the censorship is is going on at at, at such a large scale. Because yeah, all these because all these libertarians they had a Facebook you know account mm -hmm. or they had a Twitter or an Instagram 
And um, and then when I asked them, you know, about Miwi and, and par- Gab and Parlor and stuff, you know, they were very dismissive. And mm. only one guy had a Miwi, but he didn't use it, and he didn't feel like setting it up and putting all that time into it. And uh-huh. I'm like, then good luck getting people to join the Libertarian Party, which you just said was your entire mission, going knocking on doors and stuff, trying to drum up in- interest in the Libertarian Party. Yeah. You're not going to get anywhere on Facebook. Yeah, there, Facebook is shadow banning. You you don't even realize that you're not getting outside of your little bubble because mm-hmm. they don't they don't tell you. Yep. And the Libertarian Party is in a bubble. Yeah. yeah. That's so. what it is, and they're very self defeating because they refuse to pop it. It's almost yeah. it's almost like they're very inclusive. Yes, or or is it exclusive? Ex- exclusive. They're, ex- exclusive. They're, they're exclusive. Yeah, they, they're they, a country they, club. They, they keep to themselves. They don't right. really. They, they say they want to get more people, but they they don't really. I don't think they do a very good job of actually mm. getting out there. Yeah, you know. Now, uh, 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 this is another positive that I just remembered to counteract all of that self defeatingness. Um, the lady who was talking about the prison reform, she was one of the most impressive speakers there. Mm-hmm. Um, and she admitted that she came from the left. So she's a convert. She, she's woken up. Yeah. And so... Um, and she came from Lawrence. And she came from oh, Lawrence. Yeah. 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 Uh, that says something. And so... Um, <laughs> or at least she lives in Lawrence now, uh, is what she said. But she was on the left. And so she's... Um, so she's... And she has to deal with... Um, when she mentions the libertarian name, people are like you, right. and so she has to. She had to create this network of people and work on all of these subjects that she tackles uh, by avoiding that label. And so mm-hmm. she had to get really creative. And you see, what was interesting about her is that she was very animated. She was very on fire, and you know, it's it's great that she's woken up and she's come com- she's come over to our side from the left, mm-hmm. and. Um, and so what strikes what struck me about her is that she was on fire. And the few people, you know, the the biggest, you know, the, the biggest libertarians that we talked to there were the ones who were on fire. And you see, it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter what you believed in the past. If you wake up to the truth and you fully believe in it, then that passion can drive you forward and you can accomplish things despite negative, you know, labels like libertarian. Or yeah. conspiracy theorist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or am I being detained? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was pretty funny. They were making a lot of jabs at themselves for memes about libertarians. Huh. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, what was the other one? It was, um, 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 dang it. It was like, oh, taxation is theft. Oh, so, so how long am I being de- detained? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the, that was pretty funny. How they, <laughs> yeah. That was nice. At least some of the speakers were very cognizant of... Had a sense of humor. Yeah, right. a sense of humor, yeah. and were very cognizant about the image of libertarians that exists out there in the public, the, you know, okay. why people approach them with a 10-foot pole. Yeah. And um, it's those, those people at least kind of had an idea. Um, and the, like I said, we talked to people who were very on fire. Um, but not enough of them were. Yeah, it seemed like a lot of them were just kind of going through the motions, like like, and that's where the kind of the, the naivete and stuff like that might kind of come into it. But it just seemed like a lot of them were just kind of floating around, not really, not not that passionate about what, what about what they were doing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The um, the last thing I want to uh, talk about uh, on this subject, it's not a negative, but um, it will it um, one of the two questions that I asked there. Um, it was one of one of the guys that we spoke to. He asked the uh, he asked about j- jury stuff and everything, and he like oh yeah yeah he, yeah he listed everything. And but in the back of my mind, I was like, you missed something, and I want to ask. So then I I stood up and I asked the next question, mm-hmm. and I asked them what they thought about jury nullification, and so they were all in favor of it. Yeah. Um, but the the chair of the party was acting kind of strange, and he was saying that, oh, it's not something you talk about in public, and you know, Ooh. and uh, you know, really? they can come after you for suggesting somebody suggesting jury nullification to somebody who's going to be on a jury, and like, so I guess that happens because jury nullification is one of our most powerful tools. I was going to say if that's if that's the case, then that's something we need to be fighting. Yes. For even even harder because jury jury nullification is one of the most important uh, things about about the justice system. That, that's basically the 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 citizens' right 
to veto mm -hmm. a law that we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nullificate yep. the word nullification alone. Anyone that scoffs at that, mm -hmm. or like you said, kind of gets weird about it, mm -hmm. you better be suspect suspect of that individual. Okay, then yeah. we're very suspect of the people who were very. You had a odd. gut feeling that he was reacting a little bit tense about that particular yes. word. Yes. And I don't think jury upset him so much. I think it was the word nullification. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he doesn't believe in direct uh, constitutional nullification. And that's, isn't that, isn't that antithetical to libertarianism? Well, did he, did yes. he not, did he not believe in it or was he just trying to make caution, ca caution people that you might get in trouble for mentioning it? And maybe, maybe he does believe in it, but he was like, just be careful mentioning it in public because they might cut. He he didn't he literally say that, that you might they, they might come after you for it. Yes. So I, th I think he was just trying to say be yeah. careful mentioning it. Yeah, that's but, true. But you know, I, but we need to talk about it. Yeah, we yeah, we, we need uh, to. We, we definitely uh, do. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we need to make it. That's a, that's a, something that needs to get hammered uh, yeah. into people's minds. Jury nullification. Yeah. If one. If one juror said that Chauvin was not guilty, it would it would have ended the entire trial. Period. But they were all threatened. Well, it's it's a tribal thing. I mean, it's it's like listening to the party. Yep. It's like taking mm -hmm. your 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 common sense and your moral uh, decision making, and just because the party says you better you better do it our way, be a party friend. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that intimidation and that, uh, yep. that peer pressure. Oh, you're going to be the one left out, you know. That's really what it is, peer pressure. Yeah. It's just like high school all, all over again. Yep. Yeah, That's people, all need, it is. people need to be a little, have a little courage and stand up. Have a little that. backbone. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you know it's right and there's a problem there and there's a, there's a shadow of a doubt, then you better speak up because exactly. that's your job. It is your job. You'll have to answer to that when you die. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, because yep. that, that's a person's life. Um, anything else? Nope. We covered all three of our uh, of our critiques, and I think we did a pretty good job of let let me. Okay, so let's let's just quickly summarize how they can fix their problems. Okay. So their biasness, get over it. <laughs> Trump supporters are libertarians, and Trump may not fit in any of the criteria above, but he's your best bet. You know, I, I'm sorry. You know, you know, Trump. Trump's not the the savior. Trump. You know, but he is a very he he has such a following because he did such good things. You know, there's a video that we uh, we reposted to our bit shoot that's just a list of all of the Trump administration's successes and accomplishments. And it's 26 minutes long. And uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I only got through like five minutes of it before I had to go do something else because it's just like, yeah, you're just reading all of the things that he did. So anyway, get over your biases. Every American is libertarian unless they're leftist or Marxist or communist. Trump supporters are libertarian just as much as you are. Don't scoff at them because they're so-called red. The only reason they're red is is because, you know, because that's all they have. So let them know that they have another option. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just reach out to them and, and let them know that, hey, you can join us. We can get more powerful. We can we can take our country back. That's that's all Trump supporters want to do. We just want our, we, we want our country back. Yep. Even, even the fringe Trump worshipers, you know, you don't look down your nose at them and, you know, Treat them as if they're yeah, some you know, sort these, of cult. I, th I think these these so-called Trump worshippers. I think they're just they're so excited to have someone mm -hmm. who's not your typical politician. Yep, they're, they just get so excited about that 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 that's the person they focus on. Exactly. If they if they knew they had you know other options, if if there were other people that they could directly work with and things like that, it might be different. But, you know, I think that's where a lot of the so-called Trump worshipers yeah. come from. It's I think just, you're right. It's an excitement. They were excited that somebody was so transparent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and spoke. They, he, he got rid of the, the the whole tolerance thing and the PC stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to tippy-toe around the, the communists because they might get their feelings, feelings hurt. hurt. Yeah. yeah. And we did that so long that 
we lost the country, we lost the union, mm-hmm. basically, mm-hmm. and it mm-hmm. fell into the communist hands. It was a, it was a well laid out plan. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was for, through propaganda and all this PC mm-hmm. uh, stuff. And but then Trump comes in like a sledgehammer, sledgehammer. threatening to destroy the globalists. He came in like a wrecking <laughs> ball. <Right. laughs> Wonderful. Okay, that's the theme song. <laughs> Except Trump's would be a lot more wholesome. But, um, anyway, uh, so oh, but man. no, he Trump was a threat to the globalists, and so they had to demonize him and get him out. Yeah. But anyway, libertarians, Trump supporters are your friends. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Get over your biases. Number two, how uh, or. Um, Oh, yeah, and that was number two. But number one is your naivete. There, there are just getting together for you know it, with as your, your little convention at the Bluemont Hotel for as great as it was. We're not disparaging it at all because we had such a great time there. But just just doing that and just kind of knocking on doors and things and being yay we're libertarians that's not going to catch don't don't, any. don't think you're going to change the world just just by doing that because you're like 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 I was saying the the beast is bigger than you think it is exactly a lot bigger you're going to need help you cannot win the fight on your own you need people like us you need you need trump supporters you need republicans you yes. you, you you need other people to help you out with this. It's not just your, your little tiny party. Yes. A, as noble as it may be, you're yes. not going to win any battles on your own. Yeah. Yeah. So. And like, yeah. you know, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be deadly serious here. You know, all you libertarians who uh, supported Ron Paul, you know, yeah, we support, we, we support Ron Paul. And, but where did all of the support for Ron Paul come from? Well, it came from Infowars. Sorry to say, if you want to stop being naive and if you want to reach out to other like-minded people, you know, get involved with InfoWars because they're the tip of the spear. And I'm, you know, I'm not being pedantic about it. I'm not being a shill or anything. I'm just saying that's just the way that it is. Yeah, get over the conspiracy theory thing. Get over all that uh, propaganda. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, stop, stop demonizing people who are labeled conspiracy theorists. I think that's one of the most important things we could say. Yep. Because if the Libertarian Party, look, <clears throat> Infowars will have anyone on. They've interviewed Black Lives Matter people and Antifa people and 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 Jaden X, <clears throat> and um, they 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 interview anyone, everyone willing to come on. Let's get Joe Jorgensen on Infowars. Let's mm. get some of the big Libertarian people. Who is the other guy? Spike. Spike Cohen. Spike Cohen. Yeah. Let's get him on Infowars. Let's get a dialogue open. Yeah. Because guess what? The Infowars audience is so huge. And if you got your message out to the Infowars uh, community, community, then guess what? You would, like I said, if you reached out to the Trump supporters, if you reached out to the Infowars uh, uh, community, you'd have so many more supporters. Mm-hmm. So you have to get over your naivete that you can just go about your daily life being, I'm libertarian, and that's enough to light a fire. It's not. So then number three... Especially considering the fact that that one lady was talking about libertarianism being such a uh, an ooh factor for a lot of people. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. But just calling yourself a libertarian is not enough. You've, yeah. you've got to actually go out and express what it is you actually believe as an individual Yeah, and, and, and cultivate people that way. Yeah, and you know, yeah. I, I think Alex Jones has said that he's, his you know ideology is basically libertarian, mm-hmm. and you know, Owen Schroyer has as well. Like, literally, the day before uh, we went to the convention, I was listening to Owen Schroyer on the, on the war room, and he was basically just, you know, lamenting all of this stuff stuff, how we're, how we're losing our country, and he's just at his desk like, man, I just want government out of my life, man. Yep. Yep. Like, like that's, that, that's, that's, that's libertarian. That's the, that's the way 99% of the country feels. Mm-hmm. We yeah. just, e- yeah. even, even leftists, like, even, even leftists complain about how much government there is. Yeah. Okay, well, let's fix that. Let's get the government out of our lives. Exactly. That's what 99% of the country wants. Yeah. So, so, libertarians... It, you know, specifically that uh, that LPTV guy that we spoke to. Yeah, I've got another idea to pitch to you. How about you uh, get together with Alex Jones and Owen Schroyer because they're trying to get their content to be free to air. So if you want to set up a, a TV network uh, uh, with programs on it, you can you can stream the Alex Jones show and the War Room with Owen Schroyer and and the American Journal with uh, Harrison Smith for free, for free. 
And you can, and because their message is libertarian, just like your message is libertarian. So that's, that would be a suggestion that I have. For now, for number three, how you're self defeating. You're self defeating because you aren't, re, you're not admitting that you're being censored. You need to get off of Facebook. You need to get off of Twitter. You need to get off of Instagram. You need to get on Gab, MeWe, Parler. You need to get on Frank Speech as soon as Mike Lindell finally gets that up and running. No offense to Mike, he's awesome. Um, but once it's up, you need to get on Frank Speech. And you need to reach out to more people through those platforms because you are being shadow banned on the mainstream platforms. And I, I would keep Facebook. Keep it. Just just yeah. diversify. Keep it, diversify. Yeah. Diversify. Yeah, reach. the way, the way I, I was telling him on the way home, I, I was like, you know, all, like Gab and all these other platforms, that's in my mind, that's like home base. Mm -hmm. Like Facebook and Twitter, all these traditional uh, big tech things. That's like the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. go fight on Facebook and Twitter and all these things, and then come back home to home base and strategize with your with your friends, your family, yeah. and uh -huh. all the people that are on are on your side. Yep. Yeah. I was gonna I was going going to evacuate Facebook at one point, and then mm -hmm. I realized, no, they win. That ba yeah, that'd they basically win. be like giving up the fight. Yeah. That'd basically, be like you got to stay there. Yeah. And Unfortunately, I personally hate Facebook. I hate how slow everybody it is. does. <laughs> I, I I hate how slow it is. It makes whenever we get on to try and do something with our Molon Labe Truth account on Facebook, it's just it's such a slog. And then I go then then I go back onto our Gab. And I'm like, oh, it, yeah, information does not travel quickly. No. on uh, on Facebook, and that's I, probably not an accident. You yes. can have yeah, you can have a thousand or. 2,000 friends, and only 12 will see what you post. Oh, yeah. I definitely see the trickle. I see the trickle on the Facebook. And so I uh, Facebook is merely just an afterthought to us, you know? Yeah. If people share your stuff, uh, and then people it, it will have, get around a little bit. And yeah. we're appreciative every time people share our stuff. And um, to get around Facebook, you know, and their censor, I will – what I'll do is I'll post a link – to an article that would otherwise get censored on Facebook, and I post it on Gab, and then I post the link to the Gab post, and it shows the preview of the Gab post on Facebook, so people can still see the link, but Facebook isn't fact-checking it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long that's going to last, but um, I hope that people will click on the Gab links or at least type them out and follow them. We're posting those for a reason. Exactly. Now, I have one more thing. I don't want you to forget about this person you met on social media, right. on Facebook. We that elucid. was a libertarian. I want to I want to know about this one for a reason. Okay. Uh, because uh, when I spoke with you, you had mentioned that there was a little bit of a uh, some tension there. What was that all about? Well, let's go over, let's start from the beginning. Um, <clears throat> we saw a post from them on Facebook uh, they were basically saying that they hate the uh, blue line flag for the police, you know, the American flag with a blue line through it. And they said that it's a desecration of the flag. And, uh, you know, and, and they were basically bad-mouthing the police and stuff. And they're corrupt police. The Democrats protect corrupt police officers and move them to different precincts and scrub their records so that they can still do all of their cruddy things over and over again. Meanwhile, they punish good cops. But um, this person was just disparaging cops as tyrants in general, and that's not necessarily the case. So we we you know we brainstormed a response to this, thinking that was kind of odd. We had never heard, you know, the blue line was a desecration to the flag, and that it violated flag laws and blah blah blah. And so we got into this debate with them, and basically this person ended up saying that they. Um, they think that the blue line is a desecration to the flag and that, that it's bad, but that you know they didn't care if somebody burned the flag, an actual American flag. They said that it's their right to burn the American flag, but it's a desecration to have a blue line. But, but I still don't know, did, did, they, did they ever actually say that people shouldn't have the right to fly the blue line flag? They didn't say those words specifically. But they strongly implied it. They were saying that they hated that flag. I, I, but they were okay with burning the actual... Well, obviously, if you, if you believe that it's 
the, the the blue line flag is a desecration, but no, but but it's okay for people to burn the actual American flag. Well, then, yeah, uh, obviously there's some double think there. Yeah, and the and the quintessential kicker of it all was when we tried to explain our point of view that you know first we should stop all of the insurrectionists and all the people chanting you know no borders, no walls, no USA at all. You know we should stop those people and get them to stop burning our flag, which is a real desecration of the flag. Once we stop them and everything, then we can focus on creating a new symbol to support our police with that's not the American flag with a blue line through it. And you know what they said? They called us a supervillain. We're a (laughs) supervillain. Because you had a great idea? Yeah. They call you a supervillain? She said said you sounded like a supervillain from a movie or something. Yeah, because... We're going to we're going to we're going to direct your attention to this problem to distract from this problem over here. Well, that's part of the naivete that that you mentioned before. It's a not it's a very shallow way of thinking and it has full it's full of prejudice and bias. Almost and, seemed childish. And very, very childish. Yeah. <laughs> um, very. I, I mean, I don't want to dog anybody no. on in publicly here, but no. let's let's face it, anybody listening to this podcast is going to see that you can't approve. Now, okay, I'm not so into a flag yeah. that I'm going to put somebody in jail for burning an American right. flag or stomping on it. Right. It's not what it's about. No. Uh, that's that's their problem. We just know where they stand, Yeah. Mm-hmm. what they believe. Um, so we don't want to get too, you know, helter-skelter with the, with the whole you know, we're going to kill these people. Or no. It's treasonous because they stomped on a flag or burned it. Okay, but it's, it is it is disrespectful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the only people who would do that are people who want to destroy our country. Exactly. Uh, and they, they're total anarchy. They want chaos, and they want to be completely free so they can do whatever they want, whenever they want. And like, just, like. Un- until they get... Their rights infringed, then they're like, "Oh, please come help me!" Yeah, exactly. Even because, even even though they just shouted, "Defund the police and kill well, the police and all this crap." Well, right. yeah, they reserve the right to loot Foot Locker until, <laughs> but then their house gets looted, and they're like, "Oh, well, what the heck?" Yeah, yeah. then they call the police that they <laughs> yeah. defunded. They're hypocrites and they're spoiled. Yep. Yes, rotten. they are. Yep. Uh, but you know the whole coloring of the flag to make it blue to represent uh, you know a, a united effort to. Uh, Honor the police. Mm -hmm. Now, the blue bothers me. Uh, It it does bother me. But I'm not against it because I understand what it means. Mm -hmm. I'm not ignorant to why they did it. Now, I want to say, though, that there does exist a version of it that is its own symbol. It's just a black rectangle with a blue line through it. And I think they should come up, like you said, you came up with a great idea. Come up with your own flag to represent that, and, and it can be similar mm-hmm. to the the United Compact flag, the United States flag mm-hmm. representing the compact. Mm-hmm. Uh, that has a definite meaning, and that's why you they know, used it. That's why we have that flag to represent that compact with the fifty sovereign states. Mm-hmm. The police really need to come up with. They can come up with a similar flag and mm-hmm. and color it blue if you want, mm-hmm. uh, but it preferably don't use you know, a flag that represents the United Compact because it changes the meaning. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're altering the meaning. And I think that's why, that's where I have a problem with them using an, a United States flag and coloring it for uh, the men in blue, men and women in blue. It's, I mean, that's it, a valid it, point. It's not supposed to represent uh, law enforcement or peacekeepers. Right, uh, that it has a specific meaning and purpose, and right. we really should leave it for that. And that's that's perfect. But see, that was a, that was a much more intelligent way of making that point than the people we dealt with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I'm not going to call somebody a racist or a radical criminal or for, a super villain. Or a, or a super villain. <laughs> I can't. I couldn't even remember what she said because it's so stupid. <laughs> right, and you so, know, I don't agree with them using you know our our old glory as well, but. Mm-hmm. You see, like, um, I also kind of feel like, doesn't that fall into, like, creative liberty as well? Using a symbol that exists to represent one idea and incorporate it into another one? Because I see people with stickers on the back of their 
cars with the American flag, and like one of the stripes is a crane hook hanging down, and <laughs> and uh, meaning really? meaning they work with cranes, oh. and um, you know, like it's just creativity. It's see, just, see, the way I look at it is, I, I personally I don't have a problem with the police flag because to me i mean and the fact that they do use the american flag with mm-hmm. that blue stripe to me it just means that well you know because because police officers can be patriotic too yeah mm-hmm. but they're just they just got their own rendition of it so that they can honor their country but also honor what they're doing mm-hmm. you know have you know especially it's not even so much that they're doing it themselves it's more like the, the families of police officers and actually that's my point point. and actually by changing the color it's no longer Red, white, white and, and blue. blue. Uh, they've changed the meaning of that, and they have created their own flag. Yes, they yeah. have. There, simply by changing the colors. So, yeah. and that's what you were saying about artistic rendition. It's it's like a creative liberty sort of thing too. Mm-hmm. And and we have peacekeepers. See, I like to call them peacekeepers yeah. because yeah. Uh, you know that's basically what enf- they are. Yeah. yeah, law enforcement is kind of a bad uh, yeah. meaning of what their true purpose for existence is. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're supposed to stop infringements. Yes, and not not obey unconstitutional laws. Yes, exactly. and that's why people need to cut them some slack too, because <laughs> yeah. because they're they're not soldiers. Mm-hmm. They're you know, you know, yeah. people. You know, someone ends up getting getting shot by the police or whatever. Well, why? Well, why'd they do that? You know, blah blah blah. Well, they have they have the right to defend themselves just like we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and most of these guys that end up getting killed by the police, they had weapons on them. They were being threatening with them and. So we've determined provoking, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we've determined that in by changing the colors of the flag to black and white, and then putting the blue stripe through the middle, they have changed the meaning of the flag, and it's no longer a United States a representative. It's no longer representative of the United Compact yes. anymore. It's representative of you know fifty sovereign states that happens to have. Peacekeepers. peacekeepers in every, uh, all of the 50 states, which would be the stars. Yes. Uh, and the fact that they've changed the stripes uh, to black and blue, that represents, you know, them. Yeah, them. Uh, yeah. So. But because it still has that American flag uh, silhouette. That, that motif. Moti- yeah. It's it's like, they're, it's, like they're, it's combined with patriotism, too. Yes. You know, I think we've so. resolved that issue. Yes, mm-hmm. we have. I believe that they have come up with their own flag just in changing the colors. Yep. So we still have our you know flag laws and our flag, mm-hmm. and uh, and the police have their own. And you know, here's a crazy idea: you can fly both the American flag and the police rendition of it on at your house too. That's a, that's a crazy revolutionary idea, isn't it? I think I'm going to go buy one of those and put it up in here if I can there, find there space. You go. There you go. You know, it doesn't have to be big. Yeah. You just put it up there somewhere. I don't feel so bad about it anymore. And, now and in fact, <laughs> the one that you should get, there's there's a version that has all of the colors. It's got EMT colors, nurse colors, military color, firefighter color, police color. It's uh, It's got all the colors. No, I'm not going to do that. That's just too many colors. <laughs> yeah. You're racist. I just... <laughs> God, God. Oh, man. You're, Yellow, right. you're right. Yellow lives and, and nurse lives and, and EMT lives. And <laughs> they all matter. Oh, but, yeah, so. Yeah. But, okay, but we've, we've settled that debate once and for all. Yeah. It's not a desecration of old glory. It's, it's an entirely different flag. It's an entirely different flag. Now that's that similar. It's similar, but it's an entirely different flag. Therefore, the it's almost like the American flag is like a cameo within it. Yes, yeah, exactly. There you know, There's yeah. the creative license. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's it. Right now, we we need to manually restore our republic, and so mm-hmm. the Libertarian Party is part of the answer to that. But the Libertarian Party alone can't do it. You mm-hmm. have to work with the real. Republicans, not the rhinos who are greedy and who are le- leftists and who work with the Democrats. They're in bed with them. The libertarians need to work with the Republicans. That means working with Trump supporters mm-hmm. and possibly working with President Trump in the future <laughs> because ultimately we're all American. And if you believe in your values of libertarianism, that means you by default have that by default you accept Trump supporters and President Trump. Mm hmm. Should accept everyone, mm-hmm. at least as, as long as, as long as they're fighting for the same values you are. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Republicans tend to be very conservative and very Christian for the most part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the libertarians are not able to accept 
the Christians, I don't think, as well. well what do you, what do you th- what's your opinion with that? My opinion is, you know, God created this country, period. This country wouldn't exist without God. Now, and God created this country through people like George Washington and his army that fought to secure our country for your right not to believe in God. Mm-hmm. That means as secular libertarians or atheists or whatever you are, mm-hmm. you have the right to believe or not believe whatever you want. That does not mean that you should spurn those who are the lifeblood of this country, Christians. This is a Christian nation founded by Christians, by Christ. George Washington said that they witnessed so many miracles during the Revolutionary War that if somebody did not acknowledge that it was the hand of Christ that won the war for them, that they were not only... uh, Not only non-believers, but evil. They were evil. I'm paraphrasing a yeah. little bit, but that's the general idea of what he yeah. what he said. They were not only dishonest, but they were wicked. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and that's what it is. I'm I'm sorry. This is a Christian nation first and foremost, and those Christians won your freedom not to be Christian. But I see. I think I think, and I agree with everything he just said. But I think the concern is for a lot of people is like if if we. And and this is why freedom of religion and the government not being able to tell you what religion you are is, is so important because because I think I think their concern is if 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 the Republicans completely had all the power like the the Christians I should say if the Christians had all the power I think the concern is that the Christians would start saying okay the Bible says homosexuality is a sin therefore you do not have the right to be gay. Or, or something like that. Right. I, that, that. That's the concern. I don't know if right. that's the way it would be or not, but that's the concern I think a lot of people but have. I can tell you that mm-hmm. God himself yeah. would not permit that. Yeah. No, he wouldn't. Yeah, we're not supposed to pass judgment on those people. As long as they're not infringing on the rest of society or others with their alternate right. universe. Mm-hmm. Um, alternate universe. Alternate universe. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. <laughs> they, they, they should live uh, with liberty just like anybody else yeah. and live life the way they want. Mm-hmm. What I'm gathering from this is that in order to get the libertarian people, not party, but yes, the people, people, and the conservative people, not party, yes, uh, they kind of need to forget about party. Yeah, need yeah. to forget about party. And they need to find that common ground, which is really uh, codified, written in the, the Constitution. Constitution. Yeah, it's all and, there. And based on natural law. And, yeah. it's, and it's in our state's Constitution. Yep. That we need to be able to live life the way we choose Mm -hmm. without government infringement or infringement of others, Mm -hmm. right? not judge others or keep others from living uh, with those liberties and being able to own their property, which includes their thoughts and their speech. Yep. And find that common ground Mm -hmm. and focus on that and not so much on whether a Christian is going to impose infringements by getting in government and... Yeah. And making it so you can't live your life the yeah. way you want. Because or a secularist or an atheist or whatever. Yeah. Uh, causing Christians to not be able to right. pray or, right. or go to go to mass or church or whatever. Yeah, because that's the thing. The concern goes both ways. Yeah. 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 Pe- people are concerned about us as Christians getting in government and telling them you can't do this. Well, the concern, we have that same concern about atheists getting in, into power and telling us we can't well, pray. Well, not atheists. I, I'm not concerned about an atheist, Okay. I'm concerned about a radical leftist. I don't like using the right-left paradigm, but a radical leftist who wants to destroy Christianity. You know, the past pastor... Arthur, a lot of atheists do want to destroy Christianity. Yes, they do. They, they, a lot of atheists despise Christianity. I have, I'm the personal recipient of that despise, but mm-hmm. I'm saying that, you know, we have to look out for people like Pastor Arthur uh, Pawlowski from Canada. He just oh, got yeah. arrested yeah. He, for... for Opening his church. Yeah. Treated like a criminal. Treated like a criminal. Just for exercising his religion. And then there was a there was a preacher over in the UK. He was in a free speech zone. They have those over in the UK. It's a free free speech zone, and he was just reading from the Bible. And he happened to be reading from the Bible the part that defines a biblical marriage between a man and a woman. And the police arrested him too. Amazing, isn't it? It is. So look, atheists and secularists in the Libertarian Party and elsewhere. 
Christians are going to be the last people who are ever going to infringe upon your liberties because we are the ones who have suffered the most persecution throughout history, and we're the ones who are going to be first to die to protect your liberties. So the least you can do is to work with us and preserve our liberties. Because, yep. like, like for instance, the right to bear arms. Yep. You know, you fight for my right to bear arms, and you can... Bet your sweet patootie, I'm going to fight for your right to be gay or whatever. whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to fight for all people's rights. I'm not just going to fight for my rights. Yeah. Because if if everybody else loses their rights, then that, that means I have to worry about losing my rights too. Yep. We're all in the same so, boat. Yep. And we're all in the we're all, we're all in the same boat. So don't make holes. Yes. You know. Well, I tell you what. <laughs> this has been a long conversation. Of course, this has been in two parts. Yes. And uh, I've, I've benefited from this greatly. And I think that, that uh, our audience is out there. We're going we're gonna to share this information because this is not my content. This is not a Verity Seeker uh, content. This is uh, Malone Labe Truth mm-hmm. uh, interview here. Uh, these two guys are part of that organization. Uh, so this, this data will be shared uh, through both. Distribution by proxy, Project Veritas and Infowars.com. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. As long as we get the truth out there. Yep. That's what matters. Uh, that's what we're trying to find. Uh, nobody's benefiting from any of this information. Or... Except for you, the <laughs> listener. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, well, thank, thank you for having us. Yeah. You're, you are welcome. I'm glad we were able to do this. And, Me too. Uh, I'm telling you, I did. It, I did not realize that uh, so much time had <laughs> passed. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but we could go on all night yep. and talk about a great many things. I, and we did stay pretty much on topic. I, yep. Yeah, very, very I good. We, good. We touched on a lot of fringe yep. topics, but they were all they were related. they were related to what we were talking about in one way or another. Very. Sometimes you have to go off on a diatribe to reach the truth. Yep. Okay, so uh, this is Verity Seeker and Malone Abe Truth signing off. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>